All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Crockett High School. We've got some more Anderson basketball coming up for you here in just a minute on Vibe Live. The Trojans on the road here visiting Crockett. 11 and 15 on the season. However, they are the only other 5 and 0 team currently in district play. Anderson, the other 5 and 0 team. So it's a battle of unbeaten's here tonight. JV got the win here moments ago. The game that did go a little bit late, so we are getting started here about 15 minutes behind tonight, but no matter. We are good to go. We are ready to go. Another team that's a little bit beat up uh, with some COVID protocols. They're forced to uh, to call up a couple of these JV players that will uh, be on the bench here tonight uh, as uh, reserves for Crockett. But Anderson entering tonight's game with a record of 18 and 8 on the season, 5 and 0 in district play. As we mentioned moments ago, Anderson riding a six-game win streak going into the new year. So, we okay? There we go. No. Sorry about that. Just wanted to make sure everything was smooth on the broadcast end. Will be the Cougars. So we are in the Cougar Den down here in South Austin. Trojans have made the trip. They will be without Mitchell Whitlow. He uh, re-aggravated an injury that he had had uh, previously in last week's, or last Friday's game. So Anderson will be without Mitchell tonight, and it seems uh, Coach Pittsford said that he will be out uh, for a little while here. But Anderson, with plenty of depth here, he, Coach Pittsford said he expects Fred Dale to get the start tonight. Fred coming off a game where he had five points. It was a bit of a weird game against Travis, a very shorthanded Rebels team. As Anderson got off to a little bit of a slow start in that game. Jack Francis uh, carrying the load there offensively to a tune of 22 points. But we are just three minutes, 10 seconds away from getting started here. Want to go ahead and look at, uh, obviously these teams are in the same district, but we want to look at some common opponents. If you remember, Anderson lost a close game against Westwood earlier in the season. They lost it by two, 48 to 46 in a really heartbreaking fashion. But Westwood uh, got a blowout win over Crockett this year and also on the season Crockett uh, in tournament play and in the regular season pre district slate play they are 0-2 against Austin High School and if you remember that was just about the best game Anderson played all season this year they scored 84 points everyone really clicking on offense but for now Trojans are 5-0 got one more game uh, on Friday before the district slate turns back over and they've got Lhasa again next Tuesday so the two two of the stronger teams in district Anderson uh, being forced to play here on the back end. Let's pull up the standings here. The, as we said, the only two 5-0 and o teams are the two playing here tonight. Anderson well above 500. Uh, Rock, uh, Crockett a few games below 500. They're 11-15. Anderson's 18-8. and eight. The only other team above 500 in district overall, uh, well, overall is uh, Northeast. They are 17-10. and 10, But they are 3-2 and two in district along with Lockhart McCallum dropping to 2-3. and three. Travis and Navarro both still uh, winless. Wassa coming in at two and three. We've got a minute 45 left uh, before we get going here. Trojans looking to complete or continue their dominance in district play as they have yet to lose a game in nearly two years at this point in the district slate. The team's headed over to the bench now. As we said, we expect Fred Dale to get the start for Anderson this evening. First quarter ready. Still got a minute to go. Get a nice shot of the Trojan bench. Some nice exposed brick in the Cougar Den. I'm not making that up. It says Cougar Den. I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. But it is funny. Always victorious, it says. More like sometimes victorious. But 45 seconds left. Trojans already head to the bench. Crockett now making their way over now. We will uh, go ahead and send it down to the PA, it looks like, as we will have a little bit of pregame festivities from there. Hopefully, don't have too much mic feedback as uh, we were dealing with a lot of that pregame. But now, I think we are ready to go ahead and send it down there. 
And when we come back, we will have the opening tip for you. You're listening to Trojan Basketball on Vibe Live. I'd like to thank you for tuning in tonight. We are live through the rest of the season, even through these COVID protocols, able to get my name on the list and get into the games here. So here we go. Down to the PA. We'll be right back. And your Crockett Cougars. Tonight's contest will be conducted uh, by the, according to the rules and guidelines of the UIL. We ask that all participants display good sportsmanship at all times. Please also, uh, fans, keep your mask up, please. All right, please rise and remove your hats as we honor the uh, flag of the flame of our national anthem. Mm -hmm. Here, eight minutes up on the clock. Trojans looking to push it to 6 0 and make it 20 straight in district play. We're 14 0 last season. They're 5 0 now. They lost their last district game of the season. That was pre realignment. <laughs> Crockett just going to let Langley 
go ahead and take it a size mismatch here. Though they do have some size underneath. Not sure why they opted for the smaller player. They kick it out to Francis Jack. Chased off the three-point line. He'll just have to hold it. He whips it over to Bennett. Bennett not going to be shy early. No good. Rebound goes underneath to Dale. Dale can't hit it. And batted around between Langley, Dale, and Francis. And it comes back to Anderson Wagner. Back out with it on the perimeter. Back to Blackerby. Wagner into the corner. He's going to try baseline. He's well cut off. Now he's trapped into the corner. Gets it back and bounces it out of bounds. That's going to be a turnover on Wagner. So some good defense and ill-advised play by Wagner. Trapping himself over there in the corner. Up the court, here comes Caballero. Gets the hand off the bats. Bats working right. Gets it back outside. It's Matt Mendez. And here's Bats with it back outside. Blackerby defending him. He goes behind the back. Bennett takes it right away. Langley puts it on the floor, lobs it ahead for Blackerby to catch up to it. And Bennett is going to get the first bucket of the game for either team. It's 2 to nothing, Anderson. Nifty leak out. A nifty pass from Blackerby and Langley. 6.45 to go here in the first quarter. It's Jaden Caballero with it on the wing. He's driving on Wagner. Wagner cuts him off and he has to pull it back outside. Here's Mendez on the perimeter. Looking to get it into number 15, James Harper, the big man down there with Dale. Big size mismatch. He's going to try to go right at Fred. Turn around. Jay is no good. He's going to get his own board. Batted into the air. Tapped away. And they're going to say Nate was standing out of bounds when he tapped it. So, we will stay right here. 6.25 to go in the first. Bats to inbound it. Looking for Harper. They get it to him, but it pulls him outside onto the outside the three-point line. Ball now Mendez. Blackerby almost with another steal. Mendez dribbling in on Dale. No good. Rebound going to hit the floor, and Blackerby going to take it away. Some good bounces for Pennant to pad his rebounding stats. And Mendez going to foul Blackerby before he even crossed half court. That's the first team foul of the game for either team as well. Goes on Crockett. Nearly two minutes gone. Hand off to Francis. Jack with it outside. Over to Langley. Nate, pass fake, skips it to Wagner. Wagner now handing it off to Francis. Two men coming to the ball a little bit. Reese, the primary defender on Francis. Caballero kind of running out, guarding whoever has the ball outside. Now they get it into Dale on the outside. Pass over to Wagner. Wagner, nice pass for Langley. Now swing into the corner for Bennett. Bennett going to drive in, throws it up, and that's going to be an offensive foul going against Blackerby. A little more movement from Anderson. So 2 0 Crockett basketball. It's Caballero bringing the ball up with Bats. Driving in. Ooh, Harper got away with a, might have been an illegal screen. Now here's Mendez. Loses the ball, Francis defending. Jack always looking for an opportunity to pickpocket. They get it outside to Caballero. Dale will pick up as Caballero drives, tries to fling it up, and Hugh will get a whistle from the far official back here. I think they're going to call that one on Francis. That's now two team fouls against Anderson. First free throw rattles in for Jaden Caballero. Two for two. Tie game. Pass ahead to Wagner. Anderson's going to try and play with some pace. They're going to get it to Blackaby in the corner. He's going to fire away. No good. Rebound strong to Dale. Now Francis with it. 5-0-2 left. Two to two. Here's Langley. Langley going to put it on the floor, take it to the basket, kills his dribble, skips it to the corner. Now Blackerby going to have another look at one, and missed one. He gets to go. Bennett Blackerby has all five of Anderson's points. It's 5-2. to two. Good to see one go down early for Bennett after he missed a couple early. His outside is Caballero. He's going to hand it off. It's Reese on the perimeter. Four and a half to go. In the first quarter, Matt Mendez with the Dale defending. 
Mendez going to take it to Dale. He's going to pull up from the uh, free throw line. The shot's no good. Rebound, Blackerby lobs it ahead to Dale. Beautiful pass from Blackerby, and this is going to be a foul. So two free throws for Dale on the gorgeous feed from Bennett Blackerby. Doing a little bit of everything early. As we've got some substitutions, it's going to be Campbell Duncan and Ben Bazarian off the bench first. Dale hitting the first. He's coming off the uh, Travis game in which he scored five points. Have an opportunity to bo uh, boost up his scoring numbers on the season as he's into the starting lineup today. We have a couple substitutions. The first guys headed to the bench are Dale and Wagner. So Bazarian comes in for Wagner. Campbell, Campbell Duncan comes in for, uh, for Fred Dale here. So two for Dale. Francis nearly takes it away. They get it to the corner for Bats. Bats does lose it onto the floor. It's a good bounce for Crockett, but now Black will be there to take it away. Anderson with a two-on-one. Bennett going to dump it off to Francis at the last second. Jack can't get the roll, and it'll go the other way, but Blackerby takes it right back. Bennett to the basket. He's blocked, and it'll stay here. Bennett looked like just a, just a fraction of a second too late getting that ball to Francis. Jack couldn't convert. And we have a timeout for Anderson on the court halfway through the first quarter. It's uh, 3.55 left, 72 Trojans. It's a 30-second timeout, so we'll just go ahead and keep it here. Five points for Blackerby, two points for Dale. And for Crockett, it's two points for Jaden Caballero. In the district slate, Lassa at McCallum tonight, Anderson at Crockett, of course, Northeast at Lockhart, and Navarro at Travis. Navarro at Travis, so someone's got to win that game, right? We will have no more winless teams in district. So here's Blackerby. Ready to inbound it with Francis, Langley, Bazarian, and Duncan on the court. So same group coming out of the timeout as they look for Francis underneath, and there's that play again. <laughs> That's just mean. <laughs> they just Jack just getting positioned, just forcing a smaller defender off of him, putting his butt into him, and getting an easy layup on like half of these Trojan inbounds this season. It's nine to two. Now here comes Caviero. He's had the ball in his hands a lot so far. He's got his team's only two points. As Bazarian chases him into a corner, checking in now is Bonequi for Crockett. All right, here's Bats. Hands it off to Reese. Reese attacking, now pulls it back outside. Francis defending him. They hand it off to Caballero. Francis will switch. Blackerby trying to get the steal. Good job recovering, and we have a traveling violation going against Caballero. 9-2. Trojan basketball, as they, it looks like they have started to figure out some of these fourth quarter woes. Bit of a faster start for the Trojans. Here's Blackerby. Solid start for Bennett. Here comes Francis, two points in the game so far. Coming off a game in which he scored 22. He's uh, really taken over a lot of the scoring duties since we've gotten to district as they find him in the corner, and that's going to be a travel. He didn't put it on the court fast enough. Now we got some substitutions. Black will be going to get his first dress. Wagner back into the game. Same group otherwise. There's Bats, and that's going to be a foul going against Anderson. Two way. Yeah, they're going to get Campbell Duncan on the foul, and we're going to get Liam Donahoe into the game in the first half. Nate going to get his first rest. So 247, Trojans lead it 9 to 2. Now they get it into the post. Now back into the corner for Reese. And we're going to have a foul against Donahoe. Donahoe was the one that ended up. Or uh, I think it's on Dono. It's on either Donoho or Campbell Duncan. Couldn't see from this angle. It was, he was either holding up a two and a one or a three and a two. But it'll be Caballero to inbound it. And it looks like it was almost put my head down for one second to fix something on my computer. I think it was knocked out of bounds and it will stay here. Now they get it inbounds to Harper. They haven't really been able to get it into Harper, and now it's kicked into the backcourt, and that's got to be a backcourt violation, and it is. It was kicked into the backcourt by a Crockett player. It was tipped by an Anderson player. That is definitely true, but it uh, went off the 
went off them last, so it's going to be a uh, backcourt violation going against Crockett as they lose it into the backcourt off of a Cougar player. Now handoff to Francis in the front court for Anderson. 2.25 remaining here in the quarter. They skip it to Campbell Duncan, who's going to put it on the floor, take it right to the basket, and put it in. Campbell Duncan, nifty drive, nifty bucket. Trojans into double figures now. It's 11-2. to Jaden Caballero with the ball outside. Francis going around the screen from Harper. They get it into Harper, going right at Bazarian, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Good job for Ben getting position and taking the contact from the much bigger offensive player there. James Harper picking up the foul. Three team fouls for Crockett, four team fouls for Anderson with two minutes to go here in the first half. Now here comes Mike Wagner putting on the Jets. Going to get it into the front court, skip across to Jack Francis, wide open for three. Can't knock it down. Rebound to Ben Bazarian. He takes a lot of contact, so he'll head to the line for two. That's now four team fouls on Crockett, each team with four. Ben heads to the line. Scored two in their last game. Beautiful stroke on the first free throw. Twelve to two now. Zarian makes it his number thirteen to two. A couple of perfect looking free throws for my parents' neighbor. That is true. <laughs> As Ben heads to the bench. Some good minutes for him defensively. And nice job knocking down the free throws. After taking the contact, Anderson going to be whistled for a foul. Page got a little over aggressive as he comes into the game for the first time. It's a big, big time bench lineup for Anderson as it's Donahoe, Campbell Duncan, Colin Page, Jackson Gill, and then Mike Wagner, the lone starter, in to run the show and keep everything moving smoothly. It's 13 2. Anderson doing an excellent job defensively and spoke too soon as headed to the line now is James Harper. The foul going to go in on Mike Wagner. That's five fouls, or that's actually going to be six fouls on Anderson in just the first quarter. So Trojans out of fouls to give. Crockett will be in the bonus as we move forward. 137 to go in frame number one. First free throw, a brick off the back iron. Over for 2 from the line. The rebound batted around, but able to clear it away is Colin Page. As Wagner gets poked, Caballero takes it away, and it's a layup on the other end for Reese, and he barely got that to go. So first made basket of the game so far for Crockett on that. Their only other two points were on free throws. As here comes Campbell Duncan. Got to think about getting it across now. Wagner goes behind the back, gets it across the front court. Just in the nick of time, 13 to four. Anderson lead back down to nine. Their lead, largest lead was 11 a moment ago. Here's Campbell Duncan gonna catch and step into the shot. Can't get it to go. Rebound batted around. Campbell almost had it. Colin Page does. They gets it back to Campbell. Puts it on the ground and swings it to the corner. Gill left wide open. He's gonna try his luck. No good. Rebound tapped. And Bat's gonna clear it away for Crockett. And a hectic possession there, but it's going the other way for Caballero. Wagner gonna go straight up with it, take the contact, force the miss. Now Gill on the rebound, Wagner on the take. He's bringing it up, but they're going to slow it down. Under 40 to go, and Anderson, you know what they like to do here. So we'll have a little bit of time to just catch our breath and a little bit of small talk. How's everyone doing tonight? I'm doing well. Love a good Tuesday game. I started school today. It was my last first day of school ever. Senior 22, UT 22. I'm scared about that, but it's okay. 15 seconds left. Trojans getting ready to sub some guys back in for quarter number two as here's Wagner handing it off to Gill. Gill going to drive in. He's going to take it to the basket. Nice dump off the page. Campbell Duncan, the one to recover it, and he gets it to go. Some lucky bounces there for Anderson as Campbell Duncan is going to get his second basket of the game right there at the end of the first quarter. That brings his total to four. Bennett Blackerby is the leader of uh, Trojan points with, uh, with five of the team's 15. He's got a third of his team's total. Campbell Duncan is the next guy behind him with four, and then a bunch of guys with two, Bazarian, Dale, and Francis. 
going to go ahead and uh, take our first break on the broadcast. We'd like to thank you for tuning in tonight. Anderson leads it 15 to 4 after the first quarter. We'll be right back in just about 30 seconds. You're listening to Anderson Basketball on Vibe Live. Keep it here. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13. Again, another reverse. Breaking tackles. Dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds. Really close up in the corner. Rotates to Wilson. She fires the three. Oh, my God. It went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. Second quarter. Anderson with an impressive showing there in the first. Usually have been starting slow in these district games. But taking care of business here in the first quarter. Excellent defensive uh, mindset for the Trojans tonight. Only given up four points. It's 15 to four. Although the Trojans have been fouling quite a bit. It's 16 to four. For us. <laughs> It's 15 to 4, but the Trojans have 16 fouls. And right now, they're just taking the lunch money of the only other undefeated team in their district. They're just running around the perimeter for offense. Here's Reese trying to take it in at Dale. He can. He kills his dribble. Now it's back outside. Coming around the screen, they kick it over. Ball on the wing for the Cougars. Bats working on Francis. Good job getting around the screen. That's a long two, and it's well off. Black will be there to recover it. Football pass to Langley. Nate got a one-on-one, -on -one, a little Euro. Floater is good to go. Bennett Blackerby showing off the passing here tonight. Nate Langley, that's his first bucket. Now into the corner, they fell asleep. Bonequi, he's going to drive in. Floater is no good. An air ball. Francis there to clear it away. A minute gone. Trojans lead it 17-14 to 14 here in the second quarter. Jack almost had Kyle Hero stumbling, and that one is going to go right through the legs of Dale, just a little bit too low on the feed from Wagner, and it's going to be a turnover. Hope you all had a nice three-day weekend. I went down to San Antonio last night. Caught uh, Spurs' sons. First time seeing Chris Paul. Had a Booker at 48. Wow. Chris Paul, one of my all-time favorites, and I'm very glad Anderson has their very own CP3 and Corey Price. This here's Carson Reese working around the perimeter, trying to get around Wagner, because he's just going to pull up and fade, and that's a beautiful shot from the corner. Some tough shot making for Carson Reese. He's got four of his team six. Not even bad defense from the Trojans there. As Francis has it. Ooh, Jack had a lane, but instead he's going to feed it up to Langley. Now Nate going to dish it back to Francis, back across to Mike. Francis on the left side, back across the Blackerby. Bennett, not shy here, can't get it to go, a little too short. And now here comes Bats the other way, 17 to six. Trojans still have the lead. Now Bats driving in, kicks to the corner, Reese, Blackerby on the closeout, and he gets it to go. So now Carson Reese starting to heat up, and Anderson falling victim to one player again. We've got starters in now. Wagner cross court, back to Francis. Now back to Wagner. Now back to Francis. They've got Dale underneath. Francis nearly lost it going up, but he recovers it and gets the basket to go. James Harper poked it away. Francis was able to recover it and get the layup underneath the basket. Now Trojans back to a 10-point lead. Carson Reese starting to heat up here for Crockett. He's got seven points, and Harper loses the ball, but it's going to be poked out by Anderson, so it'll stay right down here. Cougars getting it in. Caballeros to inbound. He's got to get it in now. He does just get it in. Matt Mendez, the beneficiary. Five minutes to go here in the quarter. It's Caballero with it out on the wing. Now he's back up to the top of the key above the break now. It's Bats. Cougars looking for some more offense, a little uh, more natural than just tough shot making from Carson Reese. 
because Anderson playing some good defense. He's just hit a couple tough buckets. Now he's going to drive in and keep pushing them up. That one's going to be well off. Francis able to get the rebound, looking ahead, trying to find an outlet. He swings it to Black at the open in the corner. His three-pointer is no good. Bennett struggling a little bit with his outside shot here today. He's still got five points. Now Langley into the corner for Blackerby. He dumps it off to Dale. Dale going to be doubled. Still going to go up with it. Take contact. Can't get it to go, but he'll head to the line for two. Some nice work underneath the basket from Fred Dale. Stepping into the starting lineup here with Whitlow out. So Dale, three for three from the foul line early. Four for four. 21 points for the Trojans, nine points for the Cougars. Four minutes, 20 seconds to go here in half number one. Wagner picking up Caballero. Screen comes, switch on to Francis, now it's Harper. Not doing a great job of getting Harper the basketball down in the post. He's got a size mismatch against Dale. They're trying to. Anderson just doing a good job of cutting off some of those passing lanes. As here's Mendez, uh, Wagner just not letting him do much. As here's Caballero with Wagner switched out onto him. Anderson switching everything here as that's going to go out of bounds off of Crockett. One official is coming from well over on the other side of the play to call it off of Blackerby. The official that was closest to the play called it off of Crockett. Trojans displeased, but they've been taking care of business here as Dale's going to hit the bench. Derek Armour checking in. First action for Derek. Now here's Bats outside. Trojans haven't fouled in this quarter. They ran out of fouls to give in the first, and they've still yet to pick up a foul. But as I say that, this is going to be a foul on this possession probably. Because here's Bats with it in the corner. He's working on armor. Screen comes from Harper. He's going to post up armor, but they're going to swing it back outside to Mendez. Black will be doing a good job staying in front of the shifty Mendez. Screen comes on Langley. Now back outside for Harper. Now Bats, Francis defending. He crosses over, ooh, he shifted Francis there, but he dumps it underneath the, oh, it's a Harper. Harper can't get the shot. Jack, uh, rarely can you get him to bite on a dribble move, but they did there. A nice pass from Wagner to get it to Francis. He's gonna pull up for three, and not gonna touch it, a heads up play by the senior. And Mike did too much there. Looked off of what might have gone off the foot of Bats, but Bats gonna clear it away and take it the other direction. Just an all in all frantic possession as this one's whipped across and gonna be tipped out by Wagner. Good job getting that deflection. Under three to go here in half number one. 21 to nine is your score. Caballero looking to get it in. He does the bats all the way out near half court. Under three now. Armor defending bats. Trying to get it to Caballero, they do. Bennett causing some havoc on those screens. Blackerby again chasing off, going over the screen and uh, or trying to disrupt the dribble handoff there, rather, not a screen. And he's been doing a good job of it. Now they're forcing Caballero to the corner. Langley's isolated onto the guard. Now they get it into Harper. Francis defending. They get it back outside for Reese. He's going to drive in, take it to the basket. And there's going to be free throws. It wasn't on Francis. It was before that. So I think it's going to go. Oh, it's hard to see from this angle. It was either on Armour or Langley. Definitely a two. But that is the foul to give for, or that is just a foul, so now into the bonus. Or Crockett, but this is a shooting foul, so two shots, and it's Carson Reese again. He's got eight of his team's ten points. Make that nine of his team's eleven. Now, Blackerby ahead. They get it to Francis. Jack waits, misses the shot, gets his own board. It's batted away by Mendez. Francis wanted the call. It's tapped away by Armour, but Anderson can't take it. Now, here comes Reese getting around Langley. Hanging. Nate doing a great job blocking that shot. Now, Blackerby the other way. Goes behind the back, loses it. That looked like it might have gone off the hand of Caballero, and that is the call. 
Anderson just got to slow it down here. They lead by 10 with two minutes left in the half. Armour and Langley going to head out. So it'll be Dale, Campbell, Duncan, Jack Francis, Ben Blackaby, and Mike Wagner. Offense a little hard to come by right now for Anderson as that's just a bad pass from Wagner. And another turnover. That was almost bad. <laughs> almost hit where I'm plugged in. Here's Mendez over to Bats. Now back to Mendez underneath the basket. Dale staying in front. 90 seconds left in the half as Mendez is going to isolate out on the perimeter, but he'll pull it back out, give it to Reese. The hot hand, Black will be going to pick him up. Bennett doing a good job staying with Reese off the, uh, off the screen there, but Reese still driving in, going to get into the air, just kind of contorts his body, throws it up, can't get it to go. Francis takes some contact in the back from Reese, and he just can't get a call right now as here comes Wagner into the corner for Dale. Fred Dale stepping back. That shot's going to be no good. Rebound is going to go to Mendez. Francis staying up. Blackaby trying to get the steal, but Mendez is going to take it the other direction. He'll pull it back with a minute to go and try and cut into this lead a little bit. Ten-point game. Anderson doing a good job icing a lot of these screens here. They hand it off to who else but Reese. Blackerby doing an excellent job staying in front. Crosses over. They hand it off to Harper. 35 seconds left. Now Bats in the corner. Francis stays with him. He spins into the post. Ooh, behind the back move. Going to go up with it, and it's blocked by Wagner. Campbell Duncan going to push pace. Anderson has the numbers. Campbell Duncan going to take it to the basket. Gets it to go, and one. Campbell Duncan coast to coast. Campbell did an excellent job of avoiding the contact from the defensive player, and the Crockett uh, player had to shift over to try and draw the foul, or try and get the charge, and as a result, it was a blocking foul instead. And Campbell Duncan, a little bit of a coming out party here in the first half, six points. We'll call it seven, and the Trojans lead it 24 to 11 here, with just 23 seconds to go before the break. Colin Page checking into the game, too as well as Nate Langley as they get it in to Mendez, and that's going to be a foul on Wagner. Mike just a little bit off today with uh, just a little bit off. His passes just haven't been quite as good, and his defensive rotations just have been a little bit off. He's just doesn't quite have it right now. Still looking for his first basket. It's a one-and-one one here. It'll be Mendez to shoot. It'll be his first shots of the game. Matt Mendez looking for his first points. Ben Black will be into the game now. It will be Langley, Wagner, Campbell Duncan, and Francis for the last 16.4 as the Trojans try and pick up some more points. Rebound, or uh, excuse me, a free throw hitting everything there as Matt Mendez gets it to drop. He's got one point. 24-12 as Crockett's kind of even things out here. Now they just have to worry about cutting into this lead that they've put themselves in. As the Trojans still lead it by 11, Francis going to pass it ahead to Langley. Langley just wide open at the basket. And Anderson running very well here this evening. Now seven seconds left. Here's Bats. Bats, excellent spin move that he has in his bag. He gets it back outside for Mendez. Into the corner for Caballero. His shot is good. They're going to call a foul. There was no contact. Are they going to get him on the closeout? So three foul shots at the buzzer. As I guess Campbell Duncan got his foot just a little bit too close to Caballero in his landing space. Because that is not a good foul to end the half for Anderson. There's three for three from the line as Crockett getting some help here this evening to cut it to 10, 26 to nine. Anderson picking up nine team fouls in that first half to just Crockett six. Anderson leads it though by 10 points at the break, 26 to 16, as it's been a frustrating uh, on the offensive end for Anderson here tonight. They 
uh, haven't really been able to get into too much of a rhythm other than uh, in fast breaks. Campbell Duncan leading the way for Anderson, though, with seven points. Bennett Blackerby with five. Francis Langley and Dale all have four. And then Ben Bazarian, the lone player, with two. But Anderson, uh, usually they, they do a good job making adjustments at the half and coming out strong here uh, to start third quarters. Uh, last week, they went on, on a 14 to nothing run to start half number two. But the Trojans led it by as many as 13, but a foul they are called at the end of the quarter will give Crockett uh, a 10-point deficit to come back from as we enter the second half. We're going to go ahead and take a break for halftime. And when we come back, we'll have a little bit more discussion about what the Trojans can do to close this thing out as they've put themselves in a good position up 10 on the only other 5-0 and, and o team in district play. The Trojans looking to push that uh, winning streak currently just a little bit further. They've won six in a row. Trying to push that winning streak to seven. Their last loss was against Westlake in uh, that tournament that they had in Round Rock right after Christmas. The Trojans. Winners of 10 of their last 11 looking to make it uh, 11 of their last 12. Go ahead and send it to break now. Eight and a half left uh, of our halftime. We'll probably come back in about five minutes or so. But thanks for tuning into the broadcast tonight. You are listening to Anderson Basketball on Vibe Live. We'll be back soon. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13. Again, another. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone, touchdown Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one! Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you Vipe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VipeVYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vipe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vipe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VipeVYPE.com.
Bike Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at BikeBYPE.com. Bike is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, got in another verse. Breaking tackles, dives in the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. But takes the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to BikeBYPE.com. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe View program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vipe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Vipe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vipe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vipe Live does more than sports? Vipe Live does band recitals, academic events, for more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype.com. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Back in uh, at halftime here. Anderson with a 10-point lead at the break for off of uh, seven points from Campbell Duncan here off the bench. It's been an excellent game for him on the offensive end. Trojans, though, struggling with uh, with fouling here today. Got to cut back on those because right now Crockett has, has had a heck of a time uh, just scoring points. And when you give them... Uh, three free throws at the end of a half, and you put them in the bonus, uh, and you put them at the line three, four times in the bonus. That's going to be a way to keep an opponent in the ball game. So Anderson just got to be careful uh, on defense not to pick up any silly fouls or any unnecessary fouls. But they're still in pretty good position getting out, running, getting out on fast breaks. They're basically the, the two options for uh, <laughs> on defense for them or foul, the Carson Reese tough basket, or uh, forced turnover, it feels like. So Anderson doing a good job getting out and running, but that's really been the only uh, sort of offense they've been able to do uh, really, really get going today. Uh, but they've, they've done a good job crashing the glass, getting offensive rebounds, getting second chance points. They've got a lot of second chance points here tonight. But um, then a Blackerby struggling from the field here on the road. Francis not really looking for his shot here today. He's only got four points. Hasn't taken uh, a lot of attempts from the field. And Wagner is a little bit out of sorts here. Uh, just with facilitating and passing, he's turned the ball over uh, at a higher clip than we are used to seeing from, from Wagner usually. Uh, just an excellent passer and a very smart player. Just hasn't quite uh, had exactly what he needs on his passes today. Just a little bit too, too much or too little or just putting them not quite where he needs to. But overall... It's been a good game for him defensively. He's just got to clean some things up. But here we go. Ready for half number two. Need more 
from Wagner and Francis here. And they need to stop fouling. But they already lead it. 26 to 16 after two quarters. The Trojans rocking with the same starting lineup. Quarter number three here. There you go. It'll be Langley and Anderson will be on the other end for half number two. There's Langley getting it into Wagner. Mike going to turn on the Jets, try to get around Caballero, and they get it into Langley, and they're going to be turning it over on the first possession out of halftime. As Coach Pittsford putting his head in his hands, is Caballero going to take it to the basket, getting it to go, and a bad start for the Trojans. Now Wagner pushing. Cross to Langley, pass fake, back to Wagner, into the corner for Francis. Francis not going to take the shot, and instead going to be doubled. He loses it, but it's going to be knocked out of bounds off of Crockett. Francis just can't get a foul call tonight. He's taking a lot of hits. It'll be a baseline inbound as they get it into Francis. Not going to try to get it underneath, just get it back outside. Now Blackerby left open in the corner, going to fire and watch those feet for Harper as Blackerby knocks it down. Could have been called a foul on the closeout as we saw at the end of the half. Got to make sure you don't let your feet get into the landing space of the uh, of the shooter, the old Zaza Pachulia Kawhi Leonard rule. As officials start to call that more in the modern era. As Francis just trying to take it away, as here's Mendez, got away with the travel here. Now pulling up his Caballero, his shot's no good. Rebound goes to Dale, and Dale, a nice outlet to Francis. Jack going to have a one-on-one, -on -one, takes it, through the contact, gets it to go. Jack Francis will head to the line for one more on the and one. Carson Reese trying to ch chase him down and make a play, but an ill-advised foul. Francis already out ahead of the pack. They have added some extra points. No, the black B3. I forgot about the black B3. <laughs> As Jack's free throw rattles around and drops, Francis up to seven points. So now 32. Now here's Bats working his way in, and he throws it off the face of Bennett Blackerby, but not before he traveled, but that did not look like it felt great. Bennett shaking that off. <laughs> now lob over to Francis. Jack will slow it down. Now back to Wagner. They just got to get it across, and they do. Now zips it over to Jack. Now he's going to reset. Anderson content to just take it a little bit slow here. Because here's Langley. Bats gets the steal. Now here's Caballero. Anderson doing a good job getting back. Caballero crosses over, takes it to the basket, and a good roll gets it to go. As Caballero coming to life here in the second half. He's up to nine points as well. Rifles it across to Francis. 12-point lead for the Trojans. So they're just shooting themselves in the foot here. Now it's back outside to Francis. He's going to drive in, and that's going to be a foul on Harper. He grabbed him, and he's still mad at the call. He's putting his arms out and everything. I, from here, I thought it was an intentional foul. Now getting it into Francis Jack. Hit hard by Bats and no foul called. Francis hits the deck hard. And Crockett, a free pass the other way. They lose it. Now Langley up ahead to Francis. Now Mendez going to clobber him from behind. But Francis is able to get ahead and lay it in. Pittsford incensed. As he's trying to protect his players, Francis not getting the whistle tonight. He got one on Reese, but otherwise Francis just, uh, he's been a victim of, of some tough hits from Crockett as he's up to nine points. It's a 14-point lead. The official explaining that Bats got a lot of ball, but Pittsford is just uh, he's having a conversation about the balance of the whistle here tonight. This first whistle, we'll go ahead and just keep it here as both teams already coming out of the huddle for timeouts. That's a timeout for Crockett. It'll be Cougar ball. 
As Bats loses it, France is trying to take it away, and he's just going to have to pass it in. They are able to save it. That's Andre Smith into the game. Didn't see him in the first half, but he's doubled. Loses it. Wagner going to take it away. Now he's into the front court, driving in. Euro step, and that's a foul going against. No, they're going to call it travel. <laughs> My goodness. I think Coach Pittsford might have said something a little rude to the officials uh, during that timeout. As here's Caballero. As there's eight people on the floor trying to keep this a close game. Now back outside to Caballero. Back to Bats. Anderson flying around on defense, and that's going to be a travel going against Trey. I feel like Crockett has an idea of what Anderson's plays are once they call them. As this one is a lob into Dale. Dale going to put it on the floor, and that's going to be a travel called against Crockett. Now the foul's starting to uh, stack up for Crockett. Already three here in the third quarter. As that's a beautiful pass, a, a tough one into to Langley. Langley can't get the assist for Francis, but he gets the putback. So Langley, on the beautiful feed from Francis, uh, eventually it goes in. So here comes Bats. It's a 16-point lead for the Trojans. Blackerby defending. They get it outside to Smith. Smith didn't look ready for that Trojan double team when he first checked in. There's Caballero now over to Bats. Caballero behind the back. Ooh, got away with the travel, and that one's going to be off the baseline and out of bounds. It was a good feed uh, to Mendez. You just had a little bit too far to the left on it, and it hit the baseline. Anderson lobs it ahead, and Black are going to lose it, but it goes out of bounds, and it will stay Anderson ball. Trojans lead it by 16, nearly halfway through the third. Wagner looking. He finds Blackerby. They left him open. And Bennett starting to heat up here in half number two. That's his second three-pointer since uh, of, half, of the second half. He hadn't scored since the opening five points. He scored the first five for the Trojans. He was stuck at five at halftime, and he's already canned two threes here in the first four minutes of the second half, pushing the lead to 19. Anderson starting to flex on Crockett a little bit. Here's Bats, crosses over. Wagner staying in front. Now back outside for Caballero. And they get it to Smith. Halfway through the third. And that's just tough for Dale to deal with. That's one bump and a, a jump hook for James Harper to get his first basket of the game. As this is a pass off to, De uh, to Langley. Now here's Blackerby. Ooh, Bennett probably got away with the travel on that one, dragging his pivot foot. But here's Dale spinning into the post, laying it up and in. Fred Dale, that's his first field goal of the game. He's got six points off four for four from the charity stripe. Now Anderson gets the lead back up to 19. It's 41 to 22. We'll get the score updated at the next dead ball as Francis knocks it away from Smith, but Smith able to recover. Caballero going to pull up into uh, three. The shot's no good. Harper, uh, they're going to whistle Dale for that. Fred doing everything he can against the bigger uh, bigger offensive player and just has to foul Harper. <laughs> Harper, though, only with two points. They would be smart to try and get it into him quite a bit in the post as that's a mistaken pass as Langley there to clear it away. Now Blackerby into the front court, one-on-one, -on -one, as that's knocked out of bounds by Mendez. A great defensive effort to get back and to swap that one out of bounds for Matt Mendez. Two points in the game for him. 41-22. Three team fouls for Crockett, one for Anderson. They lob it in to Jack Francis. Jack can use the screen from Langley. Pulls up, and he can't get it to go. Just short Langley there on the rebound. Goes up. Can't get it to go, but he'll head to the line. Well, on that one, Francis on the jump shot, a Crockett player, I believe it was Harper, got very close uh, to Francis' ankles or his, his landing speed spot on the closeout. That's a very dangerous play. But Langley knocks it down. It's been a good, uh, good outing for Langley. 
feels a little bit quiet from the scoring that we're us uh, used to from him, but he's up to eight now with those two free throws. It's Colin Page into the game. A trap coming from Campbell Duncan to Page, and we will have a jump ball, it should be. Couldn't see what the official uh, signaled from over here, but it's, yeah, going to be a jump ball, possession arrow to Crockett, so it'll shift the other direction right after this. But good job for Anderson forcing the trap and the jump ball. Bats trying to go behind the back to split the double team. <laughs> and Colin just trying to punch at the ball. They're going to pick up a foul on him. And Page it looks like he might be a little upset on the some jawing from Bats. He's pulled away by his coach, and it looks like we're going to have a timeout on the Crockett bench. Anderson leads it by 21. It's 43 to 22. Just dominating against Crockett. The tied for first place both of these teams in district and Anderson just taking their lunch money here tonight 43 22 four team fouls for Crockett now two for the Trojans I believe we'll just go ahead and keep it here don't want to take too many breaks Bennett Blackerby has come on strong here in half number two with two three pointers he's up to 11 points Francis and Langley are right behind him with nine and eight respectively both looking Knocking on the door of double figures. Campbell Duncan yet to score here in this half, but seven first half points for him. Fred Dale up to six. He's got a bucket here in this half. Ben Bazarian, the only other player for the Trojans in the scoring column. He's got two. And for Crockett, Caballero and Reese, both with nine. Mendez and Harper, both with two. So we'll go ahead and just keep it here as we said. No need for an ad break as both these teams coming back out onto the floor. For Anderson, it will be Blackerby, Langley, Francis, Campbell, Duncan, and Page. So Duncan. In for the Trojans here. Hopefully he can put up some more points. Add to his nice offensive output here. Here's Bats as they get it into Mendez. Duncan flying around here on that left side. They get it splitting the double team of Smith, and they're going to call a foul on Campbell Duncan there. So that's the third on Anderson. As Mendez inbounds it to Bats. Page staying in front of Bats. Duncan flying around again. As is Page. Francis comes up to help on Smith. Now he goes cross court. It's tapped away and stolen by Colin Page Langley to recover. Now passes ahead to Francis. Francis takes it to the basket. Can't hit. Page on the rebound. Wanted a foul. He just throws it up. Langley on the offensive rebound. No. Batted up and batted around. And Crockett going to take it away. Mendez has it. Francis tries to poke it free. Now Mendez running into the front court. Anderson able to get back. They have the numbers to get the defense set. Now it's Adakari with it, checking into the game. Haven't seen him in this contest yet. Remember a lot of these names from last season as we are deep into the district slate. Now here's Bats Blackerby defending. Driving in, hop step. Now Mendez stepping out. Page doing a good job staying in front. 43-22 is still your score. 90 seconds left in the third. Here's Smith driving in, going right at Langley, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Nate Langley getting there, getting his feet set, and picking up the charge. That's five team fouls going against Crockett. Duncan on the inbound for the Trojans. Caballero going to check in. Short rest for him. 90 seconds left in the quarter. 127. So he gets 87 seconds, but whatever. It's fine. Here's Francis, gets around Smith. Now snaking through. Now Blackerby, and yep, that's a travel. If there's one thing basketball players hate, it's admitting that they traveled. But the score is kind of stagnated here. We've been stuck at 43 to 22 for a, for a good minute. But Donahoe into the game for Langley. So here's Caballero. Page trying to get a steal. They double. Now back out for Smith. And Anderson going to get whistled for a foul. And it's going to be Colin Page again. Colin having a tough time uh, defending without fouling here with, these, uh, with this officiating crew. His game is 
the, the value you get out of Colin Page really does kind of heavily depend on the officials. But now getting it in. Here's Adakari in the corner. Lobs it back outside for Smith. Smith's going to set his feet and fire. That's going to rattle out. Hit everything but the bottom there. And now Francis pushing the pace for the Trojans. Gets it to Donahoe. Hop step into Campbell Duncan. Layup is good. Campbell up to 9. 45-22. Under 40 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Now Caballero back outside for Adakari. Swings it across. Now here's Mendez. Anderson doing a good job on the perimeter. Bazarian into the game now for the Trojans. Caballero is just going to pull up. Francis able to come down with it. Ten seconds left. Jack trying to get away with it. He loses the ball. Now driving in. He's going to have to get it across. Lobs it into the corner for Page. Cross court is that's going to be stolen away. He was looking for Bazarian. But Donahoe gets it back. And oh, he had a shot at it. But he couldn't corral the ball and get a real attempt off. But Anderson dominant again in third quarters. 45 to 22 is the score. So with that, we're going to go ahead and take another break. We'll be back with more fourth quarter action. You're listening to Trojan Basketball on Vibe Live. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, not yet another verse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. Fourth quarter time. The Trojans have a 23 point lead heading into the final quarter of action. It'll be Langley to inbound it to Francis, and here we go. Trojans just got to keep their feet on the gas and close this one out. Francis stuck with a kill dribble, now gets it to Blackerby. Bennett zips it back to Francis. Jack gets it into the high poster for Langley. Langley just going to turn and take it to the bucket. Hey, Langley, heads up. Crashing down the lane, getting the basket to go. It's 47 to 22. Largest lead of the ball game again for the Trojans. Here's Caballero. Seems like Anderson kind of took those district standings a little personally. As they get it to Harper. Harper going to fire away. No good. Rebound Francis. Pass ahead. Oof. Just off the money to Dale. Would have been a gorgeous feed, but Francis just trying to do a little too much on that play. Might as well, though, try and get a highlight in. Bazarian getting ready to check in, it looks like. Now here's Adakari. Crockett just looking for something to do with it. Trying to get it into the post to Harper. They finally do. Now taking it right at Langley. Nate blocks that shot, taps it to Francis, and he's out and running. Jack going to take it the length of the floor before being bumped by Caballero. That'll be the sixth team foul going against the Cougars, so they're out of fouls to give. It'll be the bonus going forward for the Anderson Trojans. 6.41 to go, and we've got a bench mob. Armor, Gill, Bazarian, Page, and Price. Ooh, I can get my CP to DA pick and roll. As Page <laughs> playing the part of Jack Francis on that inbound. As Colin with his first basket of the game, 49-22. 
Despite getting a late start, looks like we're still going to end pretty much on time as that's a beautiful move to the basket. Jaden Caballero just getting right by Corey Price. 11 points for him. That's a uh, team high. Ties the game high, actually. Bennett Black would be right there with him, and Price going to get whistled for a travel in the backcourt. It's now 49-24. Caballero working on Price again. He kicks it back out to Adakari. Bazarian picking him up. They get it over to Reese. Under six to go. Page staying in front of Reese. A pesky defense there. As here's Adakari. Gets it into the corner for Smith. Now back outside. As Corey just having a hard time here with Caballero on the defensive end. But the shot will be on the floor. That's a 15 foul going against the Trojans, so they've still got one to give. As Reese broke uh, on the inbound play just a little bit too early, as they do get it in, and that's going to be another foul going against Price, as it will remain on the floor. It's another inbound. As he throws it off the back of Armour, and Bazarian took it away. That didn't work at all. <laughs> oh, thought he was Kyrie Irving. Or Westbrook? Who did that? I forget. I don't know. Now a beautiful pass. CP3 to DA, and it's blocked out of bounds. CP3 showing off the passing chops. Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton connection as we have a timeout for Anderson. Chris Paul, one of my all-time favorites. Got to see him for the first time in person last night. He played an incredibly Chris Paul game. I don't think I've ever seen him miss uh, a shot from the elbow on the right side. And Chris Paul just has a knack, man. He can make just the most average centers look just like offensive powerhouses. Like last night, I'd have to pull up the box score. I don't remember, but Bismack Biombo, if you remember him, he had like, he was like, he had like a 15 and 15 game. I mean, it wasn't exactly 15 and 15, but Chris Paul just, the beautiful passer, just I love the way. I love the passing. That's the best. That's why I think a player like Mike Wagner is so fun to watch, so special to watch. You can just see his vision uh, just any time he's up the floor. Just pass fakes and, and fitting the ball into tight windows. It's, it's really a beautiful part of the game and setting up your teammates. And Corey Price there on that last possession with a beautiful feed into a roller. But it couldn't quite convert. It went out of bounds, but it does. Go back to Crockett. So 523. Actually, it will be Anderson ball. So Price on the inbound. Lobs it up to Page. And that is an assist for Corey Price. Colin Page, that's another inbound that he just had to turn around and knock in. It's 51-24. Trojans with the lead. Five minutes remaining here at Crockett High School. Going right at the basket. That's an offensive foul. Price doing a good job there, getting the best of Caballero in that possession after Caballero got the best of him a couple times. It looks like he got popped in the lip. Corey will shake that off, but you can tell that didn't feel good. Price going to keep his head up. Now Page into the open court. Gets a man off of him, and no foul called. But maybe Reese did a good job just avoiding the contact, and that's back-to-back -back charges drawn by the Trojans, so they'll get the whistle on this end. But an excellent job on the other end, I suppose, by Carson Reese, just taking the ball away from Colin Page when he was open and alone in the front court. As here's Bazarian, crosses over to his right, working on Adakari. Ben working left, zips it to Price. Now Corey gonna cross over, try and work his way back to the top of the key, over to DA. Now back outside for Colin Page, and that one's picked off. Now over the other way, and that's and one. Colin couldn't quite get back on it on the steal. It's a nice play by Jaden Caballero, who's really beasting on this Anderson bench line up here in the fourth quarter. Kalen Hole and Andrew Alexander getting ready to, or they have checked in for Anderson. And Bazarian and Page going to check out.
Oh, skying for that board. Price over to Gill. Now into the corner for Andrew Alexander. Alexander looking for Armour, and that's going to be a turnover. Armour tried to save it, and he's going to be whistled on the steal attempt. And it will be one and one. So now is everyone's favorite. A bunch of garbage time free throws as both of these teams are in the bonus. Do you like basketball? Here's more basketball. As Harper heads to the line for two, he's got two points in the game. 26-51, the front end of the one and one is no good. Hull can't get the board, though. Caballero does. He's going to take it to the basket. They're going to call another foul. So let's keep this game going just a little longer. Caballero getting a chance to pat his stats. They're going to call a lane violation on Harper, so the second free throw is no good. So just one for one on uh, the free throws there for Caballero. 14 points in the game for him. They were up to 27. Scored five points here in the third, on the fourth. As Price loses that, Caballero saves it. Price just trying to save it into the backcourt, but it goes right into the hands of Caballero. Gill doing a great job to force a miss. Caballero launches it. Alexander able to track it down. Now over to Gill. Anderson going to try and just get this ball over half court without turning it over, and they do. Here's Price spinning and getting under control. We are halfway through the fourth quarter now. It's 51 to 27. Anderson leads it by 24. Here's Derek outside. Kills his dribble. Now back to Price. Price going to drive in. Steps to steps back. Now Alexander with it at the top of the key. Now Price going to put it on the floor, take it to the basket, loses it, and they're going to get a trap going against Price. Adakari with it up top. Uh, 315 remaining in the game. Here's Caballero. Gonna try and get around a Trojan defender. He, I guess Armour fouled him on that play. Now they're going to get Derek Armour on the foul as Jaden Caballero continues to just uh, be a nightmare for this bench lineup. Really making the game look a whole lot closer than it's been here in the second half. Hits the free throw. Here's Gill. Taking it up for Anderson. Crosses over and gets it across half court. Three minutes to go now. A 21-point lead as Crockett has carved into it a little bit here. Gets it to Price. Narrowly avoiding a five-second violation. So Anderson is trying to keep the play going. Price crosses over. Now looking for somewhere to go with it. He's able to find Armour. Armour back across to Gill. Gill going to put it on the floor, and that's another travel. It's just been a real tough stretch for this lineup here. It will be inconsequential. I don't think there's a way for... Crockett to score 21-22 unanswered to win the game. As that's going to be a turnover and a lob ahead to Alexander. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Alexander going to take it to the basket. Gets the layup on the other end. So finally, Anderson able to get a shot attempt off. And they get it to go back to a 23-point lead for the Trojans. Now here's Harper going to fire away. Rebound, no. And that's going to go out of bounds off of Reese. Fifty-three thirty. Two minutes, 16 seconds, Kalen Hall to inbound. So, we'll finally be back at home. On Friday, Anderson hasn't played a home game in a week since last Tuesday. That was that win over Lockhart as this is out of bounds. It will stay here. 69-53 in that win over Lockhart. 63-24 against Travis. And now 
in the waning minutes. Two minutes to go, 53 to 30 against Crockett. They will have McCallum at home. It's a rivalry game. And then the district slate will turn over as we are winding down the regular season. Just seven, uh, eight more games, excuse me, as Price is going to head to the line for two. Eight more uh, regular season games for the Trojans. Uh, including one more game against everybody in district and two more games against McCallum, the one team they have yet to see is McCallum team. They've lost a little bit of strength from last year, but, you know, there's always going to be that intensity between these two schools. They are 2-3 and three in district play, just 7-14 and 14 overall. They got Lassa tonight. But to round out the week, we got that McCallum game, and on next Tuesday... As Hull on the rebound, can't get the shot to go. It's going to go out of bounds off of Anderson. 152 left. It will go on the road next Tuesday at Lhasa. Two away games next week at Lhasa and at Navarro. Now here's Harper with it, sets his feet. He's just bombing away here in garbage time, can't connect. As here's Donahoe, Donahoe going to push pace, gets it to Price. Price attacks the basket, up and under, shots wild, no good. Rebound Donahoe, trying to bounce it off of a Crockett player, can't. Now Reese comes out sprinting, he's got a three-on-one, but he's going to take it himself. Can't get the shot to fall, gets his own rebound, no. Rebound goes to Smith, and he'll head to the line for two. Andre Smith getting fouled there by Anderson into the double bonus. But it was on the shot, of course, so it will be two fouls nonetheless. Under a minute and a half to go. We've got a minute 25. Anderson leads by 24 points. Up and good for Andre. Second free throw is no good. Rebound leaks out for Anderson. Now here's Gill, crosses over. Now running into the front court, kicks it to the corner for Donahoe. He's going to catch and shoot. Shot's no good. Liam trying to get his own board back, but Crockett is there, and Reese is coming the other way. 54-31, takes it to the basket, misses the lay, rebound hole, and now Price going to sprint the other direction. They're really trying to get these attempts in here in the waning seconds as Alexander has it, dumps it into Donahoe, saves it, and it's going to be a jump ball. <laughs> These last, this entire last quarter has been very silly. Very wacky basketball happening right now. Under a minute to go. Trojan's going to come out with a win, make it 6-0 and in district play, extending their district win streak to 20-0. and And they may get through alignment without a district loss, as they will be in a different district next season, as, oof, nearly a backcourt violation for the Trojans. Here's Donahoe, across to Kalen Hole, under 30 seconds to play. Price, avoiding the five second violation, but it looks like Crockett's content to just let the clock wind out here. Price crosses over, kicks it over to Gill, and now we are under 10 seconds. Puts it on the floor, and we are under five seconds, so he can just hold on to it. But instead, he's going to rifle it off to Donahoe. And that is how the game will end. Anderson picking up the victory, 54-31. to That is your final score, 54-31. Anderson improves to 6-0 and in district play. They are now 19-8 and overall, a seven-game win streak for the Trojans. And with that, we are good to go here. Already took you through the future schedule for Anderson. Uh, the team high in points was Bennett Blackerby with 10, Nate Langley, or uh, with 11, excuse me, Nate Langley with 10, so Bennett 11, Nate 10, 9 for Francis, 9 for Campbell Duncan, 6 for Fred Dale, 4 for Colin Page, and a pair for both Ben Bazarian and Andrew Alexander. We'd like to thank you for tuning in tonight. Always a blast bringing you some Trojan basketball here. As that's Snoop Daniel from the horn and some pictures in for the Trojans. Some extra media for him as I can't help but feel a little jealous. But <laughs> yeah, but thank you for tuning into the broadcast. We'll be back Friday at 8 p.m. for Anderson versus McCallum. That's a home game for the Trojans. Jack Farrell, as always, a pleasure. Love doing these games and bringing you these games, especially with these COVID protocols. But I'd like to see you all on Friday. Hope you tune in. Hope you all have a great night and a great rest of your week. We'll see you then. Good night, everybody.